All right, so, so we're here with the UI Co. So who are you? Uh, I'm Joan Solomon, and this is I'm Avi Cohen. I'm a firmware engineer at UI Co. And uh, what do you do? Uh, I'm an applications engineer at UI Co. So uh, what's the DuraTouch? DuraTouch is basically our firmware um, that enables touch sensors to work even in the presence of water or while the user is wearing pick gloves. So, so let, let's uh, let's yeah, try over here. Absolutely. So what I have here. Um, is an off-the-shelf Moto 360 that doesn't use our touch technology. And you'll see when I stick it under water, it'll start to false touch because I can't tell the difference between um, a finger and water. And then what I have on this side is a very simple UI with our touch screen um, and our touch firmware. And when I stick them both under water, you'll see the difference. See the Moto, as soon as it gets wet, it starts to false touch and do all sorts of crazy things. Like that's hardly any water on there and it's going absolutely nuts. And our unit, even when there's tons of water pouring over it, no problems, and I can continue to swipe and use it. Nice, so this works underwater? Not underwater. <laughs> so it works with rain? What does it, it, how does it work? Rain. It works with rain, it works with sweat. So I mean, think about your touch screens on your cell phones and tablets. Most of them won't work if they get wet. They won't work if you're wearing gloves. And with your cell phones, you can put it away in your pocket when it starts to rain. But a wearable device, it's on your wrist at all times. You can't put it away. You're going to use it when you're running and you get sweaty and you want the touch screen to continue to work. You might wear it in the shower and you want the touch screen to continue so to work. So this, uh, this reference design, right? Yes. This is a prototype. Uh, That's right. Why does it look like this? Why uh, does it look like that? The firmware is inside. The huh? firmware is inside, exactly. So there's, not, there's nothing fancy about the case or the process or the technology. We're using a very uh, standard ITO sensor uh, that everyone else uses as well. Again, the advantage comes in in our firmware that's sophisticated enough to tell the difference between water and a finger and not ever falls actuate when water touches the screen. So um, how does this firmware work? So it's a firmware, this yes. is a solution, it's just software solution. It's a software solution. So how does it know the difference between water and that's finger? That's in the secret sauce, so I can't share that with secret. you. It's all well, in you our can algorithms. Say. <laughs> no? So there's some algorithms? There's Yes, there's a lot of very sophisticated algorithms and um, obviously that is proprietary and we, we do have a number of uh, patents as well uh, that protect the technology. So basically uh, Motorola can call you up yes. and upgrade the firmware? They would use, yeah, absolutely. They and then it works. And then, uh, and then it would work. So Android Wear, any smartwatch? Exactly. Uh, not even have to be Android? Where, where no, does it, What does it have to be based on? Nope. Uh, all we need is a projective capacitive touchscreen, and we go ahead and put our magic firmware on there. We handle uh, processing the analog signals a little bit differently than how the standard touch controller companies do it. And that's how we're able to provide such excellent web performance and glove performance. How long time does it take you to integrate your technology in the firmware? That's a, joke. That's a good question. <laughs> we can do it as fast as you need to. We've done. Uh, we've definitely gone to MP in a few months uh, for some of our designs, so we can uh, we can jump in there pretty quickly. What's the history of UICO? What were you doing before? So UICO started off in the industrial space, uh, where it was very important to have robust and rugged touch technology, where workmen would use it with very thick gloves, very high temperatures. It's on oil rigs. Um, it's on McCafe machines where, you know, it can get really hot, you can have a number of liquids splashing on it, and it still needs to continue to work. So, um, Is it going to be uh, very useful, all your technology, and also future touch, uh, like flexible touch and some other absolutely, stuff? It's absolutely. It's going to work? Yeah, it'll com continue to work. I'm very excited about the, uh, the growth of the... Uh, um, other patterns and you know other flexible technologies and we our, our touch will continue to work. I guess they need your help to make it work, right? Absolutely. Otherwise it won't work. Not as well as it can. <laughs> yeah. okay. And uh, who are you? Hi, I'm Forrest Folsom. I'm UICO's marketing manager. So uh, here and, uh, and in general you're talking with all these companies that are making the touch solutions, right? That's and they correct. should just start contacting you? Um, <laughs> they all want to work with us. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, uh, what is exactly the, the market? Only smartwatch? Uh, is it no, smartphone? It, uh, no, no, I think it's much larger than that, but um, we have created a solution that uh, really works. It's so ideal for the wearables market, and with so many people using these devices outdoors in tough environments where, you know, if you're working out, your fingers are sweaty, if it's cold, you don't want to take your gloves off, it just has to work, or people are just going to throw it in the back of a sock drawer. But it can work on smartphones and tablets and other stuff? Yeah. 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 And how's the power consumption? 
awesome. Ultra low yeah. power. We have we imported this in ultra low power. And so. uh, we're in devices that have Wacom touch performance that last for up to a week of battery life. So uh, very competitive. Uh, uh, so that means better power consumption than normal solution? Or? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you incorporated something that had the, the capabilities that, um, that we're bringing, normally that would be problematic. But um, our, our solution is, is able to really deliver those power requirements, especially for devices that only are going to be charged at a maximum one time per day. So right now we're in November 2015, right? Yes. How soon does it take until everybody's like, wow, it works, and everybody has stuff that's based <laughs> on your technology? Uh, very soon. Very, very soon? Very soon, yeah. As a matter it goes of fact, fast? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah we're, we're about to make some announcements, and uh, we're really excited about some of the customers who we're, we're working with today. So I guess British people are very happy because it rains all the time. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're, yeah. We were thinking London would be ideal. Yeah. yeah. Or the country. <laughs> the British countryside. <laughs> there it is, and it just works uh, underwater. All right. Smooth. Uh, so how do you how do you go into implementing this with customers? Well, our customers have a, a variety of needs. Some customers uh, already have capability in a supply chain. We can provide them as, as little as a chip uh, with, our, with our IP on that chip to drive uh, into, the, into their stack up. But a lot of our customers, they don't have a stack up for touch. So we actually provide complete solutions, including a sensor, whether it's glass or film. We can also do cover lens, different materials, glass, plastics, curve, round, flat. Um, and also LCD integration, or whatever their display of choice is. So really, we work with our customers how they want to work with us. All right, and uh, so this is going to be in a lot of future touch products, right? Uh, yes, uh, we are designed into quite a few. You'll be seeing us more and more. Um, we are uh, uh, being acknowledged in the industry as the best touch solution in these real-world applications, and so we're gaining a lot of traction.